from my heart and from my hand why don't people understand my good morning guys welcome back to the channel so we are just off to collect something before we get started today there we have it guys been waiting for this for quite some time um, because now that we've got five minis in the collection logistics can be somewhat of a problem so uh, I was searching for quite some time to find a suitable sized trailer because I don't want a full sized car trailer because storage becomes a problem now the cool thing about this one is that it actually fits in a domestic garage the one that you'd normally find attached to a European house which tend to be small so this will be ideal it can carry 850 kilos which is more than enough to carry a classic mini or something like a Fiat 500 so I'm really looking forward to the freedom that this particular trailer gives up a gizzers and it's a nice addition to the workshop and it's also going to allow me to bring some of the minis to some of the bigger international shows that are a little bit further away and particularly important I think for the electric clubman conversion because it means I can bring it to shows so you guys can actually check out the final work but more importantly progress on the clubman so as you can see we've already got the doors installed I still need to do the interior cards and the hardware but we're making good progress but uh, there is some more things related to electrics that I've been working on so we're still stuck on the electrics at the moment so what I want to show you is the wiring as far as it goes underneath the car so after fitting the battery we then looked at the uh, routing for the high power cable lines because obviously they need to run to the back of the car so you can see here we've got an extruded box section that will run the length of the car that will allow the cables to connect up in front now i've seen a lot of uh, other youtube videos where they are zip tying the cables onto the chassis or just run it inside plastic conduit that doesn't work here it would never get through its test that way so this aluminium uh, box section will allow us to run the cable safely now we did have to make one modification because originally this kit was designed for the saloon mini and obviously the clubman is around about 10 centimeters longer so the last section we need to do a modification to make it longer or extend that out so uh, yeah we're getting very close to the motor installation now oh and by the way guys don't worry too much about the hole you see there where the gearbox shifter lever would normally house we do have a membrane that will actually close this hole off as well so it'll all be uh, nice and watertight. So staying on the topic of cabling and routing, if you recall from the earlier videos, I do want a CarPlay system in the car. So I need some basic speaker setup, but because the battery is going to the back seat, you can't really do speakers on the back seat. And I don't really like them when they're in the door panels because it reduces the amount of foot space that you've got when you're exiting the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the speakers, as you can see, kind of discreetly underneath the dashboard pointing down. So I've created these uh, boards and I've put some compression tape around the edge of them. So there'll be one in either side that'll give me some basic functionality. And I guess guys, I'm not going for a full on audio experience, but I do want voice control of things like maps for Apple CarPlay. And this, uh, this tape that I've used around the board to stop it from vibrating against metal it's actually a compression tape that builders use. Uh, when it's on its roll, it's flat, but when you tape it on, you can see it expands to fill the gap. So it works quite nicely when you've got wood against metal to stop any sort of uh, vibration. So yeah, we've got one side fitted there, as you see, and we'll mirror that on the other side.
What you didn't see was the other 50 times I had to open and close the bonnet to get that adjustment correct. Working now though. Hi guys, I just want to stop the video there for a moment and let you know that any um, donations or ad revenue generated by this channel is actually being given towards cancer counseling charities that are helping families that have received a cancer diagnosis get through difficult times. So any help from your side, donations, or just watch the video to the end uh, is highly appreciated. And uh, you know, from my side, thank you so much for the support so far. So moment of truth guys for the uh, electrics. I've got a battery hooked up underneath there just so I can test the cause electrics. So let's see how the harness repair went and see if we've actually got some connections. Okay, so before we fit the dashboard in, I just want to run through all the electrics to make sure everything is working, uh, because now is the time to fix those types of bugs before we actually get on to fitting the electric motor. So, side lights. Headlights. Hazard light. Okay, so we have a problem there. It's not flashing. Then we've got the heater and the fog lights. So that seems to be working. The heater switch is actually underneath. Yep, not sure if you can hear that. That seems to be working as well, which is good. So it looks like we've got a flasher unit issue. Just turn those off. All good. So wipers. So that. That's position one. Position two. And then return to center. All good. Not sure if you can hear that, but that's certainly the washer fluid. I'm still waiting for the bottle to arrive, so we uh, will wire that up. A little bit later on so right now it just looks like we've got a hazard light issue okay guys it looks like I've actually got a burnt out flasher unit so I need to get one of those ordered so we can fix that last problem uh, I think we're probably 75% of the way there as far as the car electrics is concerned for the standard electrics now uh, one other thing that I need to change before it goes to the next stage is I've been advised to change out the LED front headlights. Even though these are TUV approved, some of the test stations are more critical and apparently the one that this one goes to will be looking at those types of things anyway. So we just want to improve the chances that it'll go through. Now, once I finish the dashboard uh, installation, um, the car will actually be trailered up and shipped for its final stage to the guys at electricmini.nl because Installing the electric motor and the battery, I don't have the specialist tools here in this workshop to do that. So we're going to be moving the car over to them to get that final stage. So in the next video, you'll see the final stages. Hopefully the guys agree to let me film uh, the final part in their workshop. And uh, yeah, then we can submit it for its test. So almost there, guys. One more episode and we should be at the finish line. Okay, guys, so we're going to work out the... Uh, the final gremlins in the car before it gets on to the trailer and now before I go today I just wanted to talk about uh, the building of minis or the renovation of minis because this is actually the third one that we've rebuilt or renovated and over that time we've pretty much dealt with all of the suppliers some in the Netherlands some in the UK even some in Belgium and Germany now in all of that time there is a noticeable difference between the quality of some of the products that you're actually buying. Now, I'm not saying one is better than the other, but a recent example really elevated this for me because we were having trouble with the right-hand door on this particular car and the internal rubber that goes around the window frame was actually folding over on itself, which was jamming the window in place. Now, I ordered one from Mini Spares and I ordered one from Mini Sport. Now, interestingly enough, on first inspection, both of them look exactly the same, but it is noticeable that the one from Mini Sport seems to be a thicker rubber and it's holding its shape way better than the one from Mini Spares. Now, I'm not sure if one is old stock versus new stock, but 
seriously, if you are struggling to fit something or something's not going right, you should really check the quality of the part because the chances are that there's actually something wrong with the part, not necessarily something wrong with the car. Now, one other tip I've got for you as well, if you're looking for hard to find parts, I've had quite a lot of success here in the Netherlands dealing with uh, Ben van Leuven. Now, I'll give you an example. The front bumper on the Clubman, no one had that in stock and he actually had a brand new one in stock. So that saved me a lot of time. Something else unique that I found there as well is this. Now this is not actually for this particular product uh, project, it's actually for the next one that's coming. And it, because we're building the Britex Cooper, I needed an original rear windscreen wiper kit. Now these are very difficult to find, but again, Ben Van Leuven had one of these in stock. So if you're looking for those more challenging items, definitely recommend checking those out. And again, don't always think that because you're having a problem that you're doing something wrong. Sometimes the quality of the part just isn't up to the job. So anyway, that's it for this week, guys. Uh, as I said, hopefully in the next video, we'll be in a different location with the car to finish it off. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care and we talk to you soon. Bye bye.